All right, guys, I am back again. This is Bob, the creator of Ghost Girl. And as you can see here, uh, this is the cover to my upcoming comic about uh, Ghost Girl, which will be completed in about a month or two. I, then I will do a uh, Kickstarter in order to fund the publishing of this book. Uh, if you're interested at all, please uh, like this video and subscribe. I'm a comic book artist and I'm trying to get my name out there. Uh, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed so far. You'll never know how much that means to me. Okay, uh, but today we will be talking about X-Men number 272, part 7 of the Extinction Agenda crossover between, um, I believe it was X-Men, New Mutants, and X-Factor. Okay, it was a nine-part series. Uh, but a couple of episodes ago, I talked about the comic that got me into comics uh, when I was around 15 years old, and that was Spider-Man number 317. And um, I told you guys how, you know, I would go to the grocery store with my mother, who would uh, give me a few bucks, and I'd go over to the Rite Aid where they had a spinner rack. And on that spinner rack, they had a few titles on there. Um, Spider-Man 317 was one of them, and I think the second one that I purchased... Uh, because, again, I was so in love with the Spider-Man uh, 317. I had reread it a hundred times, and I was going up there, like, every couple of days to see if they had gotten the next issue. Uh, but they didn't. They didn't update their comics like that. Whatever they had on the spinner rack, they had up there for a month or two. Or or three months, whatever. Uh, so they did have this issue sitting there, and it caught my eye. Because I remember, you know, this was at a time... Um, when, like, you know, Total Recall and stuff like that was pretty big, uh, you know, and I'm looking at this guy right here, and I'm just like, man, he kind of just looks like a, you know, kind of an older, cool Arnold Schwarzenegger-looking character or whatever, and I'm seeing back here, I'm like, I'm like, man, Archangel, you know, looks pretty badass, and I, at the time, I didn't even know who Archangel was, uh, but the artwork looked pretty good here on the cover, I remember picking it up and taking a quick look, uh, and then purchasing this, taking it home, and then wearing it out. This was another one uh, where, you know, I couldn't stop looking at it. I was a little blown away, not only with the story, but with the artwork that's in there. And, of course, we all know this was drawn by Jim Lee uh, and written by Chris Claremont. And this is when Jim Lee was becoming super big. So uh, I was very lucky with this. I was able to continue collecting X-Men. Uh, at that right age, they were getting more X-Men comics. And I was able to purchase that. But with the Spider-Man books, I don't know if other people were beating me to the punch and getting those books before I could. Uh, but they never seemed to update the Spider-Man comics. The only other one I ever got from that Rite Aid was Spider-Man number 318, which is something I'll talk about in another episode. Uh, now, right now, we, we know the Extinction Agenda. I'm pretty sure everybody does. Uh, no other videos have gone through the story and everything. I'm just going to reminisce about this and go through the art and look at the cool stuff and everything. I'm not going to be doing like a full review of this book. Um, you know, we could talk about a few things as we go along or whatever that I might remember, but it's actually been a little while since I've read this. Uh, I just remember, you know, flipping this page here and seeing this lineup of X-Men that looks so insanely cool. Uh, and then like learning of Genosha and everything for the first time. I had never known any of this, but all I could you know, think of when I was looking at this, I was just like, man, everything here just looks so badass, okay? Um, like, look at this, when uh, Wolverine, while he's shackled, jumps up to take out somebody, um, I was just like, man, you know, this this is all pretty awesome. Uh, I was in love with this in a different manner than I was with uh, the Spider-Man number 317, Spider-Man number 317 blew my mind because that artwork was 100% different from anything I had ever experienced in comics before at that time. Uh, this was like a natural evolution to everything I had seen in comics before. This was like what I considered to be a perfected vision or a perfected version of that artwork. You know, everything I had seen before uh, from these other artists and things like that. Now, okay, granted, you know, the comics I were reading, again, were some older Spider-Man books, some Green Lanterns and things like that. Uh, so, you know, I didn't have much experience with the artwork and everything at the time. So seeing this stuff was really just blowing my mind. Um, but I think we can all agree uh, that when it comes to Wolverine, Jim Lee is definitely one of the best. And uh, this is the Wolverine I tend to think about when I hear Wolverine. Okay. Um 
like look at this man i'm just i was so impressed with like all of this this guy here uh commander hodge this giant cyborg spider thing or whatever right seeing these guys in this uh you know this chamber here strapped up or whatever i'm just thinking to myself like man this is this is a lot of detail and a lot of drawing and putting a lot of content on one page uh, which is something like I can't do. I'm not one of those people like uh, when you guys see my comic in the future, you're going to see, you know, I, I'm trying to give good artwork and I'm trying to put some good things on there. Um, but that's something I'm going to say for another video because I did draw some other comics. I was hired to draw comics for other people. And uh, we'll talk about the issues that came along with that and why I'm trying to kind of venture out on my own with it. Um but here we go where we have uh, cable broke free here. And I mean, come on, look at this. First of all, this gun is completely awesome. I've never seen one of those in real life, so I can only assume it was made up for this. And Jim Lee knows how to do his tech. I uh, guess that just looks insanely awesome. Also, ripping these wires and everything free with a cyber arm. He, this looks badass. And I know, again, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, cable's not cable unless Liefeld drew him. Liefeld created the character. I 100% know this, uh, but seriously, this is Cable to me. Uh, when I see the other Cable, I just see something with a tiny head and humongous shoulder pads. Uh, this is the one. This is the guy where I was like, this was my first introduction to Cable, and I was just, I was in love with the character from just this, okay? Um, actually, this was the first uh, introduction to a lot of characters. Like, I had never known who Gambit was. I think I knew the base core X-Men, maybe from some previous comics, or mostly probably from some uh, cartoons uh, that had come out. Like, I think I may have known X-Men mainly from uh, seeing them on Spider-Man as Amazing Friends when I was a kid. Okay? Uh, but right here we can see that Gambit took one of these spikes in his leg when um, Commander Hodge was shooting at Cable. Uh, and then he straps these people back up where they belong or whatever. Um, I love how right here... This was something that, uh, you know, I was a teenage boy. So when I was uh, looking at these books, it, it didn't occur to me at the time. But it was like every girl in every book had to have, like, a sexy pose, okay? I, I just thought that was kind of wild. Like, she, she had just got done kind of battling here or being choked by Commander Hodge. And then this is the pose that she's kind of doing, like she's picking herself up off the ground. So I kind of did think that was a little funny. Um... But at the time, I was just thinking to myself, like, damn, you know, she's kind of hot. Uh, also, man, love Jim Lee's Beast. That's just insane here. Um, okay, now they're going to pit Wolverine against Archangel. And, uh, again, uh, this was my introduction to Archangel. I did not know who Archangel was at the time. And at this same time, all of my friends had started getting into comics because I was showing them this stuff. And they were as in love with it as I was. Uh, and they were starting to, <laughs> you know, wear my comics out and everything. So they started going to buy their own. And I remember we would all run out whenever these books came out, buy these, and then have discussions on everything. Uh, and that's going to lead me to a funny story that I might just tell during this. But um, right here, we were in love with Archangel. We just thought Archangel was like the coolest looking thing ever. And we just never felt like anybody did anything with Archangel. Um... We didn't get, I don't know, I just feel like, maybe I missed it, maybe you guys can tell me if there's any really good Archangel stories out there I should read. Uh, but also, my version of Archangel is the Will Spartaccio version. I think he was the guy who perfected the look of Archangel. His is absolutely the best. And I will be getting into the Will Spartaccio X-Factor issues uh, in a future episode. Because I remember reading them uh, and just... I, I, again, fell in love with them. That was another artist for me to follow. Uh, I was 100% invested here, okay? <sighs> Tiger Electronic Games right there, right? Look at, come on. Look at this, man. That is, that is awesome. Uh, that, that's just such a perfect Wolverine pose. Look at this battle here, right? They're, they're going tooth and nail. You've got these razor-sharp claws and these razor-sharp wings. Both of them should just be cut to shreds. There shouldn't be anything left of either one of them at any point. Okay, uh, outside of uh, the prison, execution chamber, whatever that was, uh, we have Boom Boom Richter and, uh, um, oh my god, what is her name? I can't remember. 
oh well, it'll come to me because I know I know her. Uh, it's just amazing that I am drawing a blank uh, that fast. But uh, they're outside talking, um, you know, because they escaped or whatever, and they're trying to formulate a plan on maybe what to do to help get the other X-Men out. Okay. Uh, and then here we have, you know, the, 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 again, I studied like every panel of this when I got in this book because I was amazed at the storytelling that was taking place with the artwork here. Again, I was used to the older comics where you had a narration kind of telling you what was going on. And then you had an image maybe showing some of that. Uh, but here we have, say it with the art, it, it, you know, he was able to do this. You have Psylocke breaking free of these guards, getting zapped right in the um, shackles here to break those apart, knocking another guard out. You can feel like the weight of that thing as she's swinging it around, grabs a gun, goes up into the, um, into the, uh, ventilation shafts, right? And you can even see here doing her diehard quip, um, eat your heart out, Bruce Willis. Uh, I was, I was just in love with this. I'm just like, man, this is insane. Um, all of that just read so perfect to me. Okay. Uh, I've always been a Cyclops fan. Um, I just, I love the portrayal of Cyclops here and everything. And again, I loved, uh, the Cyclops from Will Spartaccio and X Factor later on. Uh, but I thought this was awesome too. This is another thing here in, um, in storytelling with the art where you have, Gambit take this spike out of his leg that he caught earlier from Commander Hodge, drop it, catch it with his feet, bring it up and unlock those manacles again, setting himself free so he can release everybody else. That is, that's perfect. If you ask me to draw that, I honestly don't believe that I could accomplish it. I, I think they did such a, he did such an insanely good job there. Okay. Um, I believe that this is Wolfsbane here. She has been converted by the Genotians uh, to be one of the, uh, Genosian slaves and she's like alerting people that uh you know they're escaping um this is uh cyclops brother havoc right here okay uh so you have the Genosians chasing after uh or you know protecting storm some of them like chose you know what they or what side they're on or something like that so i think they were trying to protect storm here commander hodge is coming um psylocke breaks out of this like look at this look at this scene right here when i saw that I saw her firing this gun and everything. I was just like, man, this is insane. It never even occurred to me that you have these mutants and they have these powers. I had never seen a mutant using a gun before because usually they would use their powers. You know, that was like the point. Uh, but then seeing this, I'm just like, man, this is kind of badass. These are like the X-Men going to war here. Okay. Um, here we go. We still have a, a whole Archangel and Wolverine, which uh, again, I feel like, each of them should just be like a metal skeleton on the ground. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Archangel actually has the ability to regenerate. That's not something I ever, you know, heard or saw before. Uh, but you have Gene here helping um, Logan, uh, who seems to be pretty hurt. I think at this time, too, he wasn't as strong as he was uh, previously. I think something that happened uh that made him weaker i'm not sure i just remember it yeah i remember her name now jubilee had mentioned it before in one of these other comics uh about wolverine not being as strong as he was uh and then right here we have storm showing up sucking uh cyclops toward her and then reactivating his mutant gene also storm is now not uh no longer a kid from what i understand she was a kid in in the issues before this uh but then they brought her back to adulthood and then we have, again, the action is just insane here, the way that she's backing in, and she's still firing, and she's like, come on, guys, we gotta go. We got these Genosian soldiers after us. Commander Hodge from one side, and all of this, she's coming in, and then Cyclops is like, well, I can take care of this now since my uh, mutant gene has been reactivated and blasting Hodge, and then we get the to be continued. I mean, come on, there wasn't even, like, room for a letters page in there. We just went right to the end of the book. Um... Again, just insane action. I love the way everything was portrayed. Jim Lee had become like a massive part of uh, comics for me at this time with this comic. Uh, so again, fell in love with this and I you know, knew that I would be collecting X-Men comics from that point on. I think the next one that I had purchased was um, the Will Spartaccio X-Factor. I believe that was coming out around the same time as this. And, uh, well, after this, actually, because, again, the writing wasn't up to date. This book could have been sitting there for months when I had finally gotten it. 
because I do remember them having the Wills Portacio X Factor uh, with Apocalypse, uh, where Apocalypse, they were fighting Apocalypse, but there's also a Shanty, which was like this cyborg chick from the future that came back to take uh, Scott Summers' child to the future. I believe that was Cable, uh, is what that is. So it was kind of like an origin thing for Cable. Uh, so I remember that, and I just got to find those issues, and I'll do a, uh, a video on it. Um, so guys, again, thank you for watching. My name is Bob. Uh, again, I'm, I'm doing a comic called Ghost Girl. If you liked this comic at, or this video at all, please like and subscribe. I'm a comic artist, and I'm just trying to get my name out there and build an audience. All right, so until next time, guys, see it.